Hey! Thanks for tuning in to this funny little thing I've been wanting to start for a while. This is basically a series where I talk about different species of herps, reptiles, or amphibians, and I will be talking about the origin, fun facts, and general care. This episode, in particular, will be focused on the Mata Mata turtle, which, of course, is a species of freshwater turtle that was discovered in 1783 by Johann Schneider, a German naturalist. The first turtle of the species to be discovered was found in South America. They are native to Bolivia, Peru, Colombia, the Guineas, Ecuador, and Brazil. Thankfully, the Matamata turtle is in no way close to extinction, although they're a relatively obscure animal in the pet trade. Now for some fun facts. I'll only be listing the ones I find interesting. There'll be a lot, though, since I find all facts relating to herpetology interesting. Number one. The Matamata turtle has been renamed about 14 times in the last 200 years. Number two, Matamata translates to kill kill in Spanish, and I can't pronounce it correctly since I'm terribly white, I'm sorry. They renamed this because in South America, people often call unattractive women Matamatas. Since this freshwater turtle is considered unattractive by some people, this was the name it was given. Number three. Matamatas generally have very poor eyesight. Their eyes are very small and flat, so it's expected for them to be lacking in that field. Number four, their necks are longer than their body. This is the most baffling and unique of all their characteristics. In fact, with this funny little neck of theirs, they can actually snorkel. This happens when the turtle extends its neck above the water to breathe. Number five, the Matamata turtle's claws are webbed. This would help them swim, but they don't take advantage of this. Matamatas are actually very mellow and don't move much. Number six, they suck up their food like vacuums. These turtles suck up their fish extremely quickly in the same manner as, you know, a vacuum. Number seven, a fully grown matamata turtle can grow up to two feet in length. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all there is. It is possible to house this amazing species in captivity. Heck, I hope I can have a Matamata turtle myself one day. But their care is more complex than your typical bearded dragon or leopard gecko. For starters, their tank must be of decent size but filled with acidic water. The pH levels should be no more than 6 and no less than 5. Although they vary in size and can grow very large. They don't need a whole lot of space since, as I previously stated, they don't really move much. These turtles like relatively hotter basking spots with lamps that get 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. As for their diet, however, they're primarily carnivorous and tend to dine on live fish. It's a good idea to keep plenty of live fish swimming in their aquarium at a time. 50 small fish at a time is a pretty good amount, and be sure to keep the enclosure stocked at all times. Of course, the amount of fish you should provide depends on the size of the turtle. There are some who get only 16 to 20 inches. Smaller ones should be treated around the same, just with slightly smaller portions. The most recommended types of fish to provide would be feeder goldfish or rosy minnows, both of which can typically be found at your local pet store. The temperament of these turtles, however, varies greatly from turtle to turtle. I'm seeing a comment here on the Reptiles magazine, Kershi, where this person's turtle is extremely social, yet the page says that these turtles can sometimes be aggressive. I'm guessing it depends on whether or not the turtle is handled at a young age, like most other species. And that concludes this funny little thing. Only time can tell if I'll make an episode 2 of this little idea. We'll see, but thank you for watching this one, though. I'll credit all my sources in the description, and if you're considering purchasing one of these animals, please do as much research as you can. I didn't go as in-depth as I could've with this video. Plus, they're a very complicated species that requires a lot of dedication and hard work. If you're a beginner when it comes to reptiles, I'd recommend doing research on other, easier to take care of animals. But that is all. Thank you for watching.